So my, my job and my role now is to provide a little bit of context. So as Koen said, we together did a, an interesting, innovative, global consumer study to explore purpose. How, how do consumers understand purpose? And that's what we'll, we'll look at today. Um, so why is purpose relevant? Well, we all intuitively understand the role of purpose as an individual, finding meaning in our lives, and as organizations, the need to create a bigger space and to have a higher role and create more positive impact overall. And that's especially important today, as we know. Maybe more so, no more so than in Brazil, given the multiple challenges that this country, wonderful country, is facing. And in this volatile, uncertain, fast-moving world, we have an opportunity to rethink in many ways, what are we here for? What are organizations here for? How can we recreate institutions, organizations for the long term to create more value in a sustained way and in a more uh, empowering way for all of us? And if we look at trust as one of the barometers of overall societal health, here's some latest public opinion research we've done in Brazil where we see trust in institutions, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, global companies, Brazilian companies, and the government. And this shows net trust ratings. Those who trust the institution minus those who distrust. So we have a net rating here. And we can see in 2015, we had this very significant decline between 2014 and 2015 across all institutions. There was a trust crisis in Brazil. That same trend has continued for government. We see a negative 79 net trust rating in government in this country. The, the, the lowest level of trust rating in any government we've tracked in 25 countries. So a very significant finding and a very challenging finding. The good news is we have a, a rebound, an increase in trust in business, be it a global company or a local company, and civil society. So the moment in Brazil is much better than it was a year ago to have civil society and business begin to work together to recreate and redefine what it means to be a successful organization and create that positive energy. And people are looking for new leaders from business and NGOs because governmental trust is so challenged. So that's the starting point. We've got a, an interesting dynamic that's happening right now. And if we understand how do we get to trust, how do we build trust, there's, there are three fundamental pillars that we've discovered in all the work that we've done across different brands and different countries. And one is this fundamental piece of credibility. How competent are you? What you do? Do you do? Are you effective at what you do? And do you deliver value through that? The second piece is all about being human. Can you be authentic? human, warm, emotional. All those different elements are so imperative and critical. And the third piece is clearly about purpose, the why you do things as an overarching decision-making tool and an overarching narrative for how you deliver. So that's what we're going to focus on. In the very simplest approach to define purpose, because it's one of those terms that is very subjective and different people have different perspectives, what, the very simplest approach is how you do what you do, how do you run your business? How do you run your organization? And how do you create societal, environmental value from that? Very, very simple. It's, and, and in the way we've described it to the public in our survey, to consumers, was equally simple. We, we define purpose as making a positive difference in society, very high level, through your products, services, and operations. So what you do and how you do it and why it matters beyond yourself, beyond self-interest. Okay, so that, that's what we're, the definition we're looking at. This, glo this global study we did was a 25 country study. We surveyed the general public in Brazil and 24 other countries um, by telephone or face-to-face -face interviews to try and understand and explore where is the public? Where are we starting from when we begin to engage consumers on the concept of corporate purpose or brand purpose? So the first insight, and they'll just share three insights quickly, the first insight relates to the opportunity. And we ask people across the world their intention and their want and their desire to support brands and companies that are purposeful. And we see 65% of people across the world, 64% of people in Brazil, want to support brands that are purposeful. There's a majority of us out there that want to do this and want to understand it. Equally high number of over six in 10 shareholders, people who own shares in the general population, retail investors, are also understand the value of purpose. 
and they see purposeful companies as more profitable than normal companies. So that's an important point. It's not an exclusive part of the traditional market mechanisms that we have. Shareholders also understand intuitively the value of being purposeful in many ways. This is a good starting point. <clears throat> the second advantage of purpose is that it powerfully drives trust. We, we, we do this analysis and we've done it much more robustly in other cases, but we simplified it here. We asked people, who's a company? And they would say, it's a woo. Um, Brazil Kieran, they would mention a, a company, and we would say, how much do you trust this company? And then we said, how is that company performing on these eight different attributes, including being purposeful, having a corporate purpose? And then we want to understand, how do these different attributes drive trust? Where's the opportunity for us to talk to consumers more effectively, to build trust in a quick way with consumers? And the analysis will show anything above this line is a powerful driver of trust. So it's something we can use and we can leverage. If it's on this side of the graph up here, high trust but low performance, it's a challenging situation. We have to be defensive and it's more difficult to engage. If we're in this quadrant where there's high trust, drives trust, and also performance is pretty strong, this is a place where we can begin immediately to engage consumers in a proactive way, not a defensive way. Okay? So here are the results across the world. Here are the results across the world. <laughs> we, we see that there's this amazing challenge here around transparency and environmental sustainability, which are important for driving trust in companies. These things matter to consumers and it shapes how they understand the reputation of a brand in many ways. The challenge is that the performance is so poor, we need to begin by being open, disclose, and prove our ability that we can perform on sustainability issues. It takes time, it's important, but it's not a quick win and not a quick way to engage consumers to redefine a relationship that we have with our, with our audience. Having a corporate purpose is in a place that's meaningful, it drives trust, and yet it's also very powerful in getting us to having a conversation with consumers immediately. It allows us as sustainability professionals and marketers to work together. Brand teams and marketing teams can easily take this on and use purpose as a powerful way to drive trust. Insight number three, there's an opportunity for leadership. <clears throat> well, we ask people, who's a purposeful company? Who's a purposeful brand? And across the world, different regions focused on different types of companies. We see in Latin America, companies as diverse from Gloria in Peru to Natsura in Brazil. Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Google are also mentioned in Brazil as purposeful brands. And there's very regional specific perspectives. In Asia, we have Samsung um, as a leading brand. In Korea in particular, in the US, Walmart and Google are ver used as purposeful companies. So there's a very regional and local flavor of purpose in many cases. But the big insight that we had was how many people are able to mention a purposeful company today in 2016? That's the interesting question. And if we look across the world, we see that 55% of people across the world can't or won't mention a purposeful company. And that number is 88% in Brazil, the highest, one of the highest company, countries in the 25 countries we're looking at. So Brazilians want to support purposeful brands, Purpose drives trust for them in rebuilding a connection to companies and brands, but they're unable or unwilling to identify and point to purposeful brands. So we have an opportunity to drive leadership going forward. So where does this leave us? Well, first of all, we're, we see this study and other work that we've done beginning to have a strong business case for purpose. It's not only useful for consumers, but for employees and stakeholders and shareholders. There's multiple ways that purpose drives value for an organization over time. Secondly, purpose may be more effective as a way to talk to consumers in particular than sustainability or corporate social responsibility. And that's because it's simpler, it's clearer, it's less technical in many ways, and it allows us to begin where they're already at, how they understand companies today. So it might be a more powerful vehicle to go forward. 
But we're very early in having this conversation with consumers. And it reminds me of perhaps 15 years ago in broad discussions that companies started to have with consumers on sustainability or corporate responsibility and how we didn't do that very effectively. The first five or 10 years was a very poor attempt to try and connect with consumers on this very complicated topic. Purpose gives us an opportunity to do it quickly, authentically, without losing the substance of what we're trying to do. And the challenge we have is to make sure we don't get co-opted by advertising firms and agencies, by marketing teams inside our companies, that we stay true to the half of purpose that's really about positive impact, social impact, environmental impact, and economic impact.